Well, Merry Christmas. It is Christmas Eve. It is so hard to believe that. We have been planning and praying and preparing for this day for months, and we are so glad to have you here with us. Guys, we know there are a variety of reasons why people can't be in the room this morning or this, this afternoon, but we're so thankful that you've still decided to worship with us in one way or another. We're, we're Thank you for joining us. We've got a lot of exciting things coming up, but if you're new with us, uh, we would love to connect with you in any way to answer some of your questions, get to know you a little bit. So you can text us at 740-457-1525. And that would be a great way for us to connect with you and just get to know you a little bit. But as we're thinking about Christmas, Brian, I was, I'm curious, what was the favorite gift you ever got as a kid for Christmas? Favorite gift as a kid? Um, boy, there were a lot of them. If I, if I had to just narrow it down, pick one, I would probably say... Uh, I think I was 10, 11, the Pac-Man Arcade. It was a mini miniature version of Pac-Man Arcade. Hours and hours and hours with that thing. Loved it. I can picture it. I can picture yep, it. Yep, yep. All right, Ethan, how about you? Fa- favorite gift growing up? Yeah, I really got to think about this one as well. I think it's got to be the year my brother and I, we got our Nintendo Wii from Grandma. And we spent all of Christmas break and a, a few years after that playing on this thing, whether it's all the different sport games or Lego, Star Wars, whatever it might be. It was, it was a great Christmas. Yeah, talk about hours of fun. Good oh, yeah. night. Oh, yeah. All right, okay, thinking about that, favorite family tradition at Christmas time? Yeah, we've got two major ones that, that I always think of. On Christmas Eve, we always did Chinese dinner with my aunt and uncle and my grandparents. We would all go out to the Lantern on Broad Street. Maybe you've heard of <laughs> yep, it. Yep. But that was our, our, was our Christmas Eve spot. But then on Christmas morning, we would do it at our house like our family, my grandparents, we would call them when we woke up. They would come over. But then that afternoon, we'd make our way over with my aunt and uncle and the whole family. We'd open gifts together, and then we'd have a fantastic Christmas dinner. What about you, Brian? Yep, that is awesome. I would probably say growing up, uh, I don't know why this is just always stuck in my mind. In fact, we still kind of do it today, but orange cinnamon rolls after opening presents. So, you I know, can taste it. I absolutely. And then, you know, after having kids, when the kids got a little bit older, um, Terry, my wife, we just started this new thing with silly string. And so after we did the presents and all the, all the other stuff, we would have a silly string fight. And so first year we did it, we did it in the kitchen. That was the last year we did it in the kitchen. But we have had a lot of fun over the years with silly string. And so, yeah, awesome, awesome memory. Yeah, that sounds awesome. We would, we hope you have fun doing your Christmas traditions, but we've got a few things coming up in service. One, one part of our service is going to be a candlelit silent night song. So if you would like to join us, you can pull out your candle. We'll have candles in the room as we sing silent night. We'll have the lights turned down low. And I think that would just be a really cool opportunity for you guys to engage a little bit with us while you're at home, um, that you can, you can still light your candle and sing along with us. Absolutely. That's always just a, a fun thing that we get to do. Really, one of the favorite things we get to do at Christmas Eve is we light candles and sing Silent Night. Really, the last thing we wanted to mention today is this. We've got some things coming up in January. Wanted to make you aware of those. We have a new round of groups starting. And so we are going to be starting a lot of different focused grow groups in January. We've got women's Bible. Bible studies, men's Bible studies. Uh, A couple of things I just want to point out. Our care ministries, we've got a couple of groups that are going to be meeting in January. Uh, Ethan, we've got our divorce care. We've got our grief share. Uh, Now, one of the things I will tell you with divorce care, one of the biggest needs we have right now is we need leaders in our divorce care for kids. That is a huge piece of the puzzle for divorce care. And we just need some really solid leaders that love kids and want to help them walk through and navigate the hurt of divorce. And so if that's something that you would like to do, we would love to talk to you. You can email us, you can text us and let us know. And speaking of groups, last thing I want to mention, we are kicking off a brand new series in January called Living Life upside down. Now, Ethan, in this series, we're going to be taking kind of a deep dive into Sermon on the Mount as we really talk about how to live differently in a culture that seems to be moving further and further away from God every single day. And so we want to invite you to be a part of that. would love for you to get connected with a group, a small group, if you're not already a part of one, just a great time to go deeper in God's word with other believers. And so if you want to know more about that, again, reach out, text us, email us, and we can help you take your next step. But we sure hope you'll join us in January as we kick off that series and study. Uh, with that, Ethan, why don't you pray for us and then we'll get things started this morning. Yeah, I'll pray for us and we'll, we'll start singing together. 
Father, we're just so thankful for this season, for times to spend with friends and family, to reflect on your birth and everything that that means, Lord. We know it's not just about the birth, but what that birth signifies. The fulfillment of the years and years of prophecies that, that Jesus fulfilled in his birth and that he continues to fulfill throughout his life, Lord. And as we look forward to, to everything that Jesus means for us, Lord, um, we're just so thankful for that. Lord, may you be with us in, in the rooms where these people online are, are listening, Lord, where they're engaging with us. Father, that your spirit, we know, fills all rooms where your believers are, that you would be present with them this morning or this evening as they worship at home. And Father, we're thankful that they joined us and we're excited for what you're going to do today. We pray these things in your name. Amen.
Merry Christmas. Thank you all so much for joining us this season. and me.
Christmas, you all can have a seat. Thank you so much for joining us, whether you're online, here in the room. We have been waiting for this for months, and so it is great to have you here with us. Thank you for spending your Christmas Eve with us. You know, the line in that song, suddenly a light in the darkness shining in Bethlehem. That is why we are here today, to celebrate and to worship. And so as our worship continues today, we just want to mention something that we talk about every year at Christmas time here at Jersey. Every year at Christmas, we talk about our benevolence offering. Our benevolence offering really allows us to care for and serve people in need, those right here at Jersey and in the local communities that we serve. And so this year, we want to extend the opportunity to you to be a part of our benevolence ministry. Every dollar you give as part of our benevolence offering goes to support people in need. Those things that we're able to do, everything from groceries to utility bills, minor home repairs, car repairs, and really everything in between. And so if you wanna be a part of that, we would love to have you join in that effort with us. A couple of different ways you can do that. If you wanna just give cash or check, all you need to do is find one of our benevolence offering envelopes they're on the black tables as you made your way into the room. Grab an envelope, put the cash or check in there, and then simply place that envelope in our offering towers in the back of the room. If you'd like to give online, you can certainly do that. Very easy to give online. Simply head out to jerseychurch.org give, and it will walk you through the steps. You'll select benevolence in the drop-down menu. And so we just want to thank you in advance for being a part of our benevolence ministry, knowing that in 2024, we're going to be able to hopefully, prayerfully meet even more needs than we did this past year. And so we look forward to being able to do that. As we continue in our worship, as we think about our worship, as we think about the benevolence offering, as we think about what that will allow us to do, I'm reminded of a couple of verses of scripture found in Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 15 and 16. It says this, Therefore, through him, let us continually offer up to God a sacrifice of praise that is the fruit of lips that confess his name. And then listen to this. Don't neglect to do what is good and to share, for God is pleased with such sacrifices. 
I'm gonna pray for us this morning and then we are going to continue our worship. We're gonna remain seated and just really a spirit of prayer and a spirit of worship as we sing this next song, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Wow, what an amazing thought that is, Emmanuel, God with us. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for this time that we have just to to gather here in this moment to worship. We're here to celebrate and to worship. And so as we think about Jesus coming to this earth, stepping out of heaven, coming to this earth, living a sinless life, going to a cross, paying the penalty for our sins. Father, we thank you so much for your amazing love, your amazing grace for us. Our worship now, whether it's through something that we sing, something that we give, Father, this is our worship to you. We pray that it's pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen.
quiet for a bit The little Lord Jesus Lay down his sweet head The stars in the sky Look down where he lay And the little Lord Jesus Asleep on the hay Merry Christmas, everyone. So glad you're here with us tonight. This is a special night. It's a, it's a holy night. We sing that song because it is the night before we celebrate the birth of our Savior. It is the night we prepare for the, the celebration. And, and like many of you growing up, I went to a family's house to celebrate Christmas. We always went to my grandparents. And, and at my grandparents, my cousins, my aunts, my uncles, my, my, my family, my, my grandparents, everybody would be there. And we always had so much fun together. We, we laughed. We would, I would get there with my cousins and we'd play. And then we'd open up gifts and we'd play with the gifts that grandma had given us. And, and there was always a buffet of junk food that everybody wanted to eat. And, and it was so great because there were so many people that my parents didn't know how much I ate. And, and so I was able to eat all the junk food on Christmas that I wanted to. And, and, and my grandma, as, as we began to grow as a family and there'd be more and more people. Cousins would get married. Cousins would have kids. We'd all come. We, we didn't quite fit in the living room. So my grandma one year decided that the tree she had, the real tree, she wanted to shrink it. And so she had this bay window. And so what she thought she'd do was cut it off a little bit and stick it into the bay window so we could fit more people into the living room. Well, so she calls my grandpa in and grandpa comes in and he hears grandma's plan. She says, now James, I want you to cut the tree off a little bit so we can get it in the bay window. Then we can fit more people. And so they go, okay, they agree on the plan. They, they walk out of the room and then a few minutes later 
My grandma hears the revving of an engine, but, but it wasn't quiet, it was loud. And so she began to walk in the other room. She goes, that sounds like it's coming from my living room. And she walked in the living room just in time to hear the whine of my grandpa's chainsaw cutting the tree in half in her living room. She, the sawdust is going everywhere. Blue smoke from the, the engine is going everywhere. And my grandma's like, what are you doing? And he said, I'm cutting the tree so it fits in the bay window. And grandpa put it in the, in the Christmas stand and put it in the bay window and we had more room than ever that year. But he definitely did it the way my grandma did not expect or even would least prefer to have, have it happen. So, so, you know, Christmas trees, right? Every house in America has a Christmas tree tonight. Christmas trees have always been part of celebrating Christmas. And in fact, in, in America, we, we have them all over and we even put things around them and on top of them, we decorate them. And Christmas trees have always been a symbol for Christians of Christ. It, 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 research shows that it really started in like the 15, 1600s in Germany where people started to put trees in their homes. And, and the reason they picked a Christmas tree, a, a pine tree for their Christmas tree was because they saw it as uh, something that was always green, evergreen. And it reminded them of the eternal life that Christians have in Jesus. Not only that, the, the, the triangle shape of the Christmas tree, the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, it represented the Trinity. Branches of a pine tree tend to go up and point to heaven instead of down and point to the earth. The, the pine needles reminded people of the, the crown of thorns that Jesus wore. There were, there were so many things about a pine tree that, that they picked it to be the symbol that decorated their home on Christmas morning. And really, it's not much different than in the United States. Because in the United States, what do we put on top of our trees? We put the star, the star that reminds us of the, the star that led the wise men to Jesus. And, or, or you put an angel on top. And what's the angel but the messenger who, uh, who called to the shepherds and said, Jesus is born. Christmas trees point us to Jesus. This time, this Christmas season, this night points us to Jesus. Why? Because on Christmas Day, we celebrate the birth of our Savior. And what better way to do that than to read the Christmas story together? And so I'm going to read this. Many of you can even quote parts of it because it's read every Christmas. But there's something about it that we need to pay attention to as we celebrate this holiday. So read Luke chapter 2 verses one through seven with me. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole empire should be registered. This first registration took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So everyone went to be registered, each to his own town. Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and line of David to be registered with Mary who was engaged to him and was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. Then she gave birth to her firstborn son and she wrapped him tightly in clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no guest room available for him. Again, many of you have heard that passage, but as we look at it with fresh eyes this Christmas, let's look at what it's telling us. First, it tells us about Caesar Augustus. Everybody knows Caesar Augustus. You, nobody questions whether or not he existed. And during his reign, this happened. And then they talk about Quirinius, who was, a, was governing in Syria. Quirinius is a historical figure that we, we know existed. We have, we have writings about him, and we know that he was in Syria. And the, the empire that Caesar Augustus ruled was the Roman Empire, right? We have so many things written about that. And then Syria... The reason that was important was that was the Roman territory which included Nazareth and Bethlehem in it. And so, so Luke, the writer of this book, is giving us real names of real places that happened in history. And then he goes on to talk about the city of, of Nazareth and Galilee and, and Judea and Bethlehem called the city of David because David was born there. Again, real places that we can find on a map that we know existed. And then he talks about Joseph and Mary, two real people that experienced 
the birth of Jesus firsthand. You know, Mary being, being nine months pregnant, traveled from Nazareth to, to Bethlehem, a, a, a journey of about 70 to 80 miles. And she traveled there nine months pregnant. And the reason we know she was nine months pregnant is because when she got to Bethlehem, she had a baby. Now, you see what I did right there, right? Sometimes when you read the, uh, the Bible, it's logical. She was pregnant and then she had her baby. It must have been around nine months since she found out she was pregnant. And so she gets there, but she, she's traveling and she has, she's pregnant almost nine months with a baby. You've, we've seen ladies who are pregnant and the, the discomfort, here she is traveling on foot at times, probably on a donkey by times, you know, just in the uncomfortableness. This is real. And Joseph, as the loving husband, is guiding her to the place where they need to be. And then we think about the actual birth and how when they get down there, there's so many people. All of Joseph's family has shown up, right? Just like my family reunion at Christmas, all of his family showed up for the census. It was so crowded, they find themselves in the stable, in the barn. And guys, this, this is a real birth story. It's not like the picture show with, with the angelic glow and the harp playing in the background. That, none of that happened. This is Mary and Joseph in a stable. And if anybody's been around animals, no matter how much you groom them, no matter how well you take care of them, they are still animals. They're still dirty. They still smell, let alone in a first century stable of a poor family. Straws on the floor, covered by everything and anything you can imagine. And then here's Mary. Here's Mary having a child. Joseph holding her hand and the baby comes and they wrap that baby in, in clothes and they place him in a feeding trough. This is a real story about a real birth of Jesus. You say, well, Matt, why do you go through all these gritty details now? This is Christmas. This is the time of joy. This is the time where we should be merry. Well, because we've got to understand that Jesus was born in real life, in real time, and he was born for you and he was born for me. See, Jesus was born because he, he loved you. He didn't come like Caesar Augustus would come into a town with a big parade. He didn't live in a palace like Quirinius lived in, but, but he came to earth as a poor child because he loved you and he loved me. Because he wanted to forgive you and he wanted to forgive me. Matthew, or Matthew 20, 28 says, Jesus is saying, I did not come to, to be served, but to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. The reason Jesus was born was so he could give his life as a ransom for your sins and for mine. To take the punishment that I deserved and you deserved because of the wrong things we've done. Jesus was born for you. Jesus was born for me. And he came because he loved you. He came because he wanted to forgive you. And he came because he wanted to rescue you. And even while Joseph was waiting for Jesus to be born in Matthew 1, 21, the angel comes to him and he says, look, you are to name this baby that's to come. You're to name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. See, Jesus came to save us from our sin, to rescue us out of hell and into heaven. And that's what we celebrate this evening and tomorrow. We celebrate that Jesus was born because he loved you, because he wants to forgive you and he wants to rescue you. That's why this birth in a stable in the middle of nowhere first century Palestine, Jesus came. Now as we, as we, as we continue to worship tonight, I want you to think about that. When you look at your Christmas tree, when you gather with your family, I want you to think about that. That Jesus was born for you. Jesus was born to die for you. Jesus was born because he loved you. Jesus was born because he wants to forgive you and rescue you from your sin. That's the beauty of Christmas. It's not so much that the baby was born. It's that Jesus, our savior, was born. Let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, 
Lord, we thank you so much that you sent Jesus to be born as a baby, that you sent Jesus to be born as a child who would save us from ourselves, save us from our sins, that you sent Jesus to die for us. And Lord, today we celebrate the coming of our Lord and we look forward to his second coming. But Lord, we think about that night. We think about that night that was just, it was silent except for Mary and this baby. It was silent and then the angels filled the sky and they proclaimed the coming of Jesus, our savior. Lord, we, we thank you for that night. We thank you for that special night. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen.